climbing so that's, uh, the slope of the, of the volcanic dome. Right. We will be at the Can top. record that? Looks to be that it's low. There's so much time and energy and money that is put into doing cutting edge oceanographic research on a platform like the EV Nautilus that ensuring there are facilities and places to curate and manage all of that data that we collect is absolutely paramount to the mission. My name is Megan Lubetkin, and I am a curatorial assistant at the Marine Geological Samples Lab here at the University of Rhode Island. I'm always in awe of all of the moving parts on a ship, not just the ship itself, but the people and all the equipment and all of the goals and objectives, and that is definitely not forgotten when I'm handling samples here. You know, having that perspective of being on land, working on the data that was collected at sea, it's really nice to have an appreciation for all the work and all the people that were involved to help get that data. It's a huge team, it's a big effort that involves many, many people from the ship to the Inner Space Center to the research institution that eventually gets the information. It's a process that's ongoing and even when you think it's over and we put the samples up in the collections and they're stored away in our library here, you never know who might request to do a different project or a different analysis on samples. And we get that happening all the time. People requesting to do work on stuff from different parts of the world. It's just an ongoing process involving so many people. <laughs> ROV Hercules has two methods of collecting geological samples. One of which is a push core which is about a foot long plastic tube that you push into the sediment and it takes a cross-sectional core of that sediment profile. And you get to look at the interface between the seawater and the seafloor. Then the other type would be using the manipulator arm on the vehicle to collect either a rock and you grab it, or you could use maybe a scoop to scoop up some gravel. So we, we kind of categorize these as rocks and cores. Once we collect those samples and they get stored in the vehicle and Hercules comes back on deck, then we'll take them out of the vehicle, out of their sample holders, and we'll process them in the wet lab on the ship. So that involves the whole science team. So as a science manager, my role is to sort of conduct and help manage the processing of all of these samples in the wet lab, as well as the processing of the digital data and all of the sort of metadata associated with those samples. But then once those are ready to go and they've been documented and processed in the lab, we'll ship them here and we'll receive boxes in the mail from the Nautilus with these beautiful samples. Then we'll take them and process them here. Often what we do to preserve and store cores is we'll, we'll slice them down the long axis. So then you have sort of two identical copies and you can have one archived and one used for science and they'll be incorporated into our database and available for scientists anywhere to request and study them. They're used for different types of science. Cores can be used to study paleoclimate and look at past sediment records. Push cores are not very deep, so often they're used to look at the interface between the seawater and the seafloor, and maybe the microbes that live there. Whereas rocks can be used for a ton of different types of things. We'll do a visual inspection. We have some rock saws where we can cut a rock open and see what it looks like on the inside. If it's like a pillow lava or volcanic rock versus a mineral deposit or hydrothermal vent deposit, different types of science can be done on different types of rock samples. What we're doing in the Marine Geological Samples Lab is curating the samples. So this, this facility is one of only a handful in the nation that has the quantity of samples we have, pushing something like 10,000 samples, and the ability to curate 
these types of samples. And we're incorporating them into our database and into our facility so that people elsewhere can do science on them. If you think about it, if you go out and do all of this science and collect all of these samples and a few people use it for a year or so, and then those just get lost in their lab or in some building or you, know, you don't really know where they end up going, it's, it's a lot less useful to the greater scientific community than if they're part of a library and an archive and a system that is designed to share and promote collaborative work.